Hello, hello, V from Movies Hunter here. Today, I am very excited because I want to share with you this drama romance film from 2008 called The Reader. Movies like this are very rare to find, which makes me say, damn, bro, what a beautiful movie, la. And trust me, it's not easy to impress me. So, the film opens in Berlin in the year 1995, where we see a man named Michael who is preparing breakfast for a woman named Bridget. Bridget. <laughs> yeah. With whom he spent the night with. Michael tells her that I am going to meet my daughter later today. She is returning home from abroad, abroad after a year. The film then flashes back to a tram in early 1958, where a 15-year-old Michael gets off the tram. But he soon starts vomiting, and he might just be pregnant, except he is a man. Now, a 36-year-old woman named Hannah comes there and helps Michael get back to his home. At home, the doctor reveals, Michael, you are pregnant with twins and you need to rest at home until you release them. Just kidding. Michael is actually diagnosed with scarlet fever and needs to rest. Okay. <laughs> Once he recovers, he returns to the place where he met Hannah to thank her for helping him. As she changes her clothes, oh no, Michael peeks through the door to see her. Oh no. Don't peek, boys. Don't peek, little boys. Don't fucking hide your peepee law. But when Hannah catches him, he runs away in shame. One day, while traveling on a tram, Michael sees that Hannah works there as a tram conductor. A few days later, he returns to Hannah's apartment to apologize to her. Hannah asks him to bring some coal from the basement as an apology. <laughs> Since he got dirty after work, Hannah offers to bathe him. She then removes her clothes as well and seduces Michael. Oh, that's interesting. So, as days pass by, Michael begins to visit Hannah after school every day. One day, Michael gives Hannah a poem to read, which he finds interesting. But Hannah tells him, La Michael, I, I, I would rather listen to you read that poem. As days pass by, Michael continued reading literary works to Hannah. She put forth the condition that Michael has to read her a poem every day, and then only will she make love to him. Michael has fallen in love with Hannah, and Hannah too is slowly falling in love with him. One day, Michael sells his Sam collection so that he can take Hannah on a bicycling tour in the countryside. After having lunch, Michael takes Hannah to a church. They get married. Just kidding. But Hannah is happy to be there and thanks Michael for bringing her. And for making her day special. One day, Hannah gets a promotion with the tram company and is now going to work in the office. But she is not happy with the promotion and becomes unsettled. When Michael tries to read her another poem, Hannah snaps at him. Michael gets angry as it's his birthday, and Hannah didn't even bother to ask him how he is. Come on, Hannah. He expresses that he loves her, but Hannah pushes him off and even slaps him. Michael then notices that Hannah is upset and tries to cheer her up. The two then make love at her apartment one last time. Soon after Michael returns to his school, Hannah moves out of her apartment without telling Michael that she is leaving. Oh no. When Michael returns, he learns that she is gone. Michael is heartbroken by this and has no idea why Hannah left. Eight years later in 1966, Michael is now 23 years old and is studying law. As part of a special seminar taught by his professor, he takes Michael and all the other students with him to observe a trial of several women. These women were accused of letting 300 Jewish women die in a burning church when they were SS guards on the death marches following the 1944 evacuation of the concentration camp. Woo. Michael is stunned to learn that Hannah is one of the defendants. On the day of the trial, it's revealed that a young Jewish survivor named Ilana has written a memoir about how she and her mother survived the extermination camp. When asked about the extermination camp, Hannah testifies that I was aware of what was happening in the extermination camp. I admit that all the SS guards, including myself, would randomly select 10 prisoners who would then be executed to make room for new prisoners. Hannah would choose physically weak and less able-bodied prisoners and send them to their deaths. When Elena arrives at the court, she identifies Hannah and the other guards who were part of the extermination camp. Ilana also reveals that Hannah had a different method of choosing a prisoner. She would randomly choose one female and ask them to read her a book in her office. After that, Hannah would send the prisoner to their death. Ilana's mother, Rose, reveals that when they were marching, they decided to spend the night at a church. But suddenly, an aerial bombing raid by the Allied forces accidentally hit the church. 
where more than 300 prisoners were sleeping. The church caught fire and the prisoners tried to escape, but all the exits were locked. The SS guards, including Hannah, had the power to unlock the exits and let the prisoners escape, but they did nothing. All the prisoners died that night except for Ilana and her mother, who somehow survived the fire. When Hannah is blamed for that incident, Hannah says, No boy! I and the other guards together decided not to open the doors. But the other defendants then turn against Hannah and blame her for writing the report authorizing the church incident. The prosecutor even produces a document with Hannah's signature, proving that Hannah was indeed in charge that night. So, the prosecutor asks Hannah to provide a handwritten sample of her signature to compare it to the signature of the document, but Hannah suddenly retracts her denials and accepts that she signed the report. After watching everything, Michael belatedly realizes Hannah's biggest secret. She is illiterate. This is the reason why she chose to join the SS. She wanted to avoid a job promotion at the tram company which would have revealed her illiteracy. Michael approaches his professor and informs him that he has information favorable to one of the defendants. But since the defendant is ashamed of revealing her secret, Michael doesn't know what to do. His professor tells him that if you had learned nothing from the past, Michael, then there is no point in having this anymore. Michael then goes to the prison to visit Hannah, but he then changes his mind and leaves the prison without seeing her. On the final day of the trial, Hannah receives a life sentence for her role in the church deaths. As for the rest of the defendants, they are sentenced to four years and three months. Now, after graduating from law school, Michael becomes a successful lawyer. He marries his classmate, and together they have a daughter, whom they name Julia. But after a couple of years, his wife leaves him as he remains emotionally withdrawn. One day, Michael returns to his home and rediscovers his books and notes from the time of his affair with Hannah. He then decides to read some of those works into a tape recorder and sends the cassettes and another tape recorder to her in prison. Hannah instantly recognizes his voice and is overjoyed to hear him once again. Michael keeps sending countless cassettes to Hannah, who listens to the recordings every day. One day, Hannah decides to borrow a book from the prison library as she wants to teach herself to read and write by following along with Michael's tapes. She eventually starts writing back to Michael, saying, Thank you so much for sending me these audio tapes. As time goes by, Hannah's literacy improves and she requests Michael to send more audio tapes. Although Michael keeps sending, he does not write back to her. 20 years later, in 1988, the prison warden calls Michael and informs him that Hannah is going to be released soon for her good behavior. Since Hannah doesn't have any family or other whatsoevers, the warden requests Michael to find a place for her to live and also find her a job. So Michael agrees to help and goes to visit her at the prison. Although Hannah is happy to see him, Michael is somewhat distant. He tells her, I, uh, I, I had arranged an apartment and a, a job for you. <laughs> when Michael asks Hannah what she has learned from her past, Hannah replies, I never thought about what I did before becoming a SS guard. The dead are still dead, and it doesn't matter what I feel or think now. After Michael leaves, Hannah commits suicide by hanging herself in her cell. When Michael arrives at the prison on the date of Hannah's release, he is informed about Hannah's death. Hannah leaves a note to Michael. In a T10, in her will, she asks Michael to give her life savings to Ilana, whose memoir of her dreadful experiences in the concentration camp Hannah has read. Later on, Michael travels to New York, New York, New York, where he meets Ilana. Michael also confesses his past relationship with Hannah to her. He then reveals that Hannah was illiterate for most of her life. But Ilana rebuffs him by saying that there is nothing to be learned from the camps and that he, you should go to the theater if you are seeking catharsis. Ilana then decides to keep the tea tin since it is similar to the one she herself had owned before being sent to the camps. But since she refuses the money, Michael suggests donating the money to a Jewish welfare organization dealing with illiteracy. In the present day, 1995, Michael reunites with his daughter Julia, who is now 21. He drives her to the church that he and Hannah had visited during their bicycle tour. Michael then shows her Hannah's grave and begins telling her their story. And so this was the story of the reader. See you in the next hunt.